Good morning friends, this is Manish Khandewal. I am a mechanical engineer having a total of 36 years of experience, out of which 16 years I spent in auto sectors having their plant operations like production, quality, maintenance, PPC, supply chain management. These auto sectors were supplying directly to OEMs, mainly the Japanese OEMs. Last week I made a presentation on quality management system. This was made on some other platform. Of course, the challenges on the QMS, of course, I posted on my YouTube channel. This week, I am making a presentation on OEE. So, what is OEE? Three words, Overall Equipment Effectiveness. As written, OEE indicates as to how much we have been productive in the time available to us by capturing the losses. OE can be calculated for one particular machine also, it can be calculated for one line also. So let's understand some terminologies. One is total time, that is one shift or two shift, whatever is the time, that is the total time. Then is the planned downtime. How much downtime have we planned already? That means the lunch time, the tea time, then of course the shop floor meetings, daily preventive maintenance of the machine training sometimes, sometimes trials, all these things which we are planning will come into this category. Then there are some unplanned downtimes like machine breakdown, the line is stopping due to the shortage of the material or there are some quality issues, the line is stopping, low manpower, we are running the line slow because of low manpower, the changeover loss. So all these unplanned downtime will come in this bracket. So the time available to us to do the production will be total time minus the planned time minus the unplanned downtime. So what are the components of OE? There are three components. One is the availability. So availability we check, we calculate as the actual runtime divided by the planned runtime. As we understood before also, planned runtime is total time minus the planned downtime. Now, if we are reducing the unplanned downtime also from the planned runtime, it will give us the actual runtime. So, availability basically will capture the unplanned downtime, impact of unplanned downtime. Then is the performance. Performance is basically cycle time multiplied by the product quantity. How much? actually we have used the time to produce this much of quantity divided by the actual run time actual run time that means the available time minus the unplanned downtime so i have this much of a time available to me to produce how much actually we have used that time so that will come in performance and third is the quality the OK quantity divided by the total quantity. So OK quantity is total quantity minus the reject quantity. So this will capture the rejection. We'll just take one example here and make things more clearer. So let's, understand, let's assume that we are running a shift of 8 hours. So total available time to me is 8 into 60, 40 minutes. Then the planned shutdown, that means lunch time, tea time, shift meetings, trainings, plan trainings, trials, all these things will come here. And for example, this is again uh, assumption, for example, this is 80 minutes. So my planned run time will be 40 available time minus the planned shutdown. So planned run time will come by reducing both and it will come to 400. Then unplanned breakdowns. Again, this is an assumption. Say, for example, machine breakdown, a power failure, or change over time, or quality issues. So, total put together, this is, for example, it is 45 minutes. So, net runtime will be subtracting these two, I will get 355 minutes. Now, when I calculate availability, what I will do? Net runtime divided by the planned runtime. 
355 divided by 400 will give me the availability in percentage 88.75 here you can see if the unplanned breakdown is zero so my availability will be 100 percent so this particular availability is giving me the impact of unplanned breakdown next is the performance for example the cycle time for a product is 25 seconds and again we are saying actual run time is total time minus planned and unplanned breakdown so 355 minutes or we change it to say seconds for calculations purposes so total production possible is 21,300 21, divided by 25 that is 852 pieces I can make if I am 100% performing or there, there are no hidden losses or direct losses but actual production is 785 my performance is going to be 785 divided by 852 that is 92.14 please mind it this also is a very very high figure this is all assumption and here of course what I am capturing is I am capturing the losses maybe I am not 100% efficient to use the machine properly or there are some loss of time loss of time due to movement waiting there, there may be some some time so we can first calculate the performance and then we can know we can analyze why there is a difference third one is very simple quality that is total production say 785 as we have mentioned above total rejection sorry total production 785 rejection say for example it is five pieces the so quality is okay production divided by total production that is 780 divided by 780 it comes to 99.36 now i multiply all these three availability was 88.75 multiplied by performance 92.14 multiplied by quality 99.36 this gives me a figure of OE 81.25 percent is my OEE now how do I interpret it basically if it is 100 percent OE then it is perfect it is perfect even it is 85 percent this is world class getting OE of 85 percent is world class and getting OE of 60% is considered as an average below 60% or below 50% I can say this is considered as poor operation if my OE is reducing is coming less than 50% or so it is a poor operation and we need to immediately take some actions now how does it help one is the health of the machine as we studied before also in availability we can know what are the unplanned shutdown and one of the reason is machine breakdown so we can know if OE is coming less we can know if there is any problem with the machine second is the wastages like transport waste, waiting time or defect this will come in performance then the change over time we have uh, studied before also how much time are we spending on changeovers availability of the material whether there was any breakdown or shutdown because of the availability of the material or manpower how much efficient our manpower has been what is the status of the machine maintenance then condition of jigs and fixtures maybe because of the worn out jigs and fixtures my output is low so that also I can know line layout may be a problem because of the for, for the for uh, performing me better so all these things can be uh, interpreted all these things can come into picture now what are the challenges one thing you must have seen there that OEE this does not consider this manpower so whether the production is being done by 10 people or 100 people it doesn't take care of that so this is one 
negative in calculating OEs. Then secondly, it is not practically possible for us to note down as to what time or how much delay the operator is coming after lunch or break, lunch break or tea break or how much early he is leaving before the shift or how much late he is starting the shift. So this is practically not possible. So this is one of the challenge. Then the for improving the performance, as we said that, okay, this much quantity we can make, but we could make only this. So where are the time? Where are the non-value added time? Value added and non-value added time. So we need to do the VSM. And then value stream mapping. So value stream mapping, not many industry go for. It is a tedious job. So not many industry go for it. So it becomes difficult for them to, to understand why the where the problem is as to why the performance is coming low. Then there are always discussions on the breakdown time. Maintenance says no, there was one minute breakdown time. Production will say no, there are the, it is two minutes or two and a half minutes. So there has to be a joint signature when the machine is you know handing handed over or taken over. So there are always some discussions on the breakdown time of the machines. So basically in this, if we are noting down the planned and unplanned downtimes correctly, we can know how to reduce the unplanned breakdowns. Where are the problems? We may find some low hanging fruits where we can reduce the unplanned breakdown and improving our OEE, overall equipment efficiency. So friends, uh, if you like it, just subscribe this channel. Thank you very much.